Hello, welcome to Biostock Studio here at Medicom Village in Lund. Today I'm joined by Cynic Pharma's CEO Jeppe Odelsen and CFO Patrick Renblad. Welcome to both of you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. I'd like to start out by talking about your recently released Q2 report. Uh, Jeppe, could you summarize the period for us? Well, it has been a very busy quarter. Uh, we started out the quarter with uh, conducting a rights issue, mm -hmm. and thanks to strong support from our shareholders that we're now successfully. Uh, we have seen that the, the market in biotech has been a very difficult one, and therefore we're very happy that uh, we managed to conclude that in a successful way, so that we could uh, finance our programs the way we want. Mm -hmm. Then we have spent a fair bit of time on getting the programs ready. Uh, we will start uh, the studies uh, shortly. Uh, and therefore that has been important to us as well. Uh, on top of that, we have had the huge task of uh, getting the company uplisted, mm -hmm. uh, made ready for the NASDAQ uplisting, and uh, that we completed uh, successfully uh, here in, uh, in, in this quarter as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so that has uh, been three important points for us uh, during this quarter, so, so yes, busy times. Yeah, great. Uh, well, uh, Patrick, uh, talking about the financials of the report, uh, what's the main message there? Yeah, so the main messages are basically that we report a net loss of uh, 44 million Swedish after six months. Um, so that's uh, including a 5 million tax credit that we uh, accrue for, and, and that's basically a system where we, we get a refund from the Danish tax authorities mm -hmm. for investments into R&D. Um, we accrue for them this year, and then we get the actual refund next year. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that gives us a net operating expense in the in the six months of uh, 49 million um, whereby r d uh, investments in r d was were 28 million up 16 percent from last year and that's that's basically the the ongoing studies that we have ongoing that's driving that and also the preparations for the upcoming two um, ra studies that we are planning to to start here in the the second half of the year mm -hmm. and then on the general and administration uh, that's where we've uh, invested a lot uh, in this quarter um, on, on, in the first half of the year mm -hmm. uh, with uh, a reported spend of, of 21 million Swedish up from six last year. So that's, an, that's a, a significant increase sure. um, driven uh, to a large extent by the NASDAQ project. Sure. Um, not entirely, but, but uh, to a large extent. So if a fair bit of that is non-recurring. Uh, expenses uh, such as the the uh, application to Nasdaq, which we will not have again, mm -hmm. obviously. So we expect that the GNA expenses will definitely come down here from the third quarter, and and we expect them to to balance out on on a level about 20% of total operating expenses uh, going forward, which is which is mm -hmm. roughly the the level we had prior to the Nasdaq project. Yeah. Um, then on on on. The financial numbers. I also want to mention that we we were um, supported or boosted by the rights issue that Jeppe mentioned, sure. uh, where we brought in 125 million after issuing uh, expenses um, here in the in the second quarter, and we were able to finish uh, finish the the first six months uh, very strong with uh, 96 million Swedish in our in our bank accounts. And Patrick, how long will your current cash position? Um be able to finance the, uh, the future development activities? Yeah, good question. So we, we, um, we expect that the 96 million that we have uh, in cash on hand uh, end of June, together with the 15 million that we expect to receive from the Danish tax authorities over the next uh, year, year and a half, will suffice to fund the clinical program that we have uh, planned uh, and will start here uh, in, in, in very short uh, uh, period. Um, and keep the company uh, running until the end of 2023. Mm -hmm. So our runway is, is 18 months. Okay, great. Um, yep, as you mentioned, uh, now the company that is listed on the NASDAQ Stockholm main, main market, uh, why did you decide to uplist the company? Well, uh, as you know, we have a, a large shareholder base of more than uh, 12,000 uh, shareholders right now. Uh, and they have been uh, very supportive to the company and really made this uh, journey possible. Uh, we see a need for, in the, in the longer run, uh, to extend our shareholder base, uh, including also uh, international and more specialized investors. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is uh, why we decided to, to go for an uplisting. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we have been in discussions with uh, a lot of these investors over the last 18 months, and uh, many of them have a serious interest in investing into uh, to Sinact. But uh, one of the requirements have been that we have been listed on a, on a bigger stock exchange, and therefore uh, we made the decision to, to do an uplisting. Mm -hmm. And Patrick, uh, what are the um, potential benefits of the uplisting, and also the requirements it places on the company? Yeah. So uh, on, on the benefits, I think Jeppe uh, already mentioned those. It's, it's the, uh, the availability for professional and, and institutional investors who previously were not able to invest in our, in our share due to Spotlight. I mean, Spotlight has served us really well uh, over the years, but it's, it's not a platform where all investors uh, like to, to buy shares and invest. Another benefit, I mean, we often talk about institutional and, and professional investors, but another benefit is actually that now we are um, open for also uh, all our Scandinavian um, private investors. That wasn't the case before. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of some uh, Danish banks, for example, um, offer um, spotlight companies, but not all. Mm -hmm. Now with, with the Nasdaq listing, we are, um, we are open for all uh, the Danish as well. Okay. And it's important for us because we are a Scandinavian company with a, with a big uh, Danish presence. Of course, yeah. Um, so on the, on the requirements, uh, I think uh, there are a lot. <laughs> uh, um, I think uh, if you summarize them, I, well, I summarize them in three areas. Um, it's governance, uh, risk management and control and reporting. And, and governance, those who follow us have seen that over the past year we have implemented a lot of, of uh, governance um, changes, such as we we have a nomination committee now, uh, we have uh, guidelines on remuneration, we have uh, strengthened our board of directors, we have uh, formed um, these committees to the board of directors with uh, responsibilities for audit, uh, so audit committee and remuneration committee, etc. So th those are the publicly um, announced changes to our government governance. In addition to that, we've built internal governance uh, structures and policies, 15 to 20 policies over the past uh, 12, 12 months, which is part of the requirements for an ASTAC listing. And then uh, risk management and internal control is, of course, an area of governance, which, but I, I, I bring it up uh, specifically anyway, where we have strengthened with uh, enterprise risk management, um, having processes around identifying, assessing, and managing risks. Um, that's also important for a spotlight company, but it's even more requirement for, for a, a Nasdaq company. Sure. Um, and and uh, internal controls, um, we've over the past year, we've built, designed, and implemented over 80 internal controls that we that we follow and, and we, uh, we report on mm -hmm. on, a, on a frequent basis. And then lastly then, uh, reporting, uh, I mean, it's IFRS is, is a definitely requirement, and we have we have implemented IFRS in our financial reporting since since last year. Um, but there are other requirements as well, um, and it's it's a little bit um, <coughs> tangible because if you look at our uh, recently released Q2 report, it's actually one third thicker, or well, more pages, sure. uh, thirty percent more pages than the one that we re released a year ago. Yeah. So governance. Uh, risk management, internal controls, and reporting requirements. And that, of course, means that we have to increase our uh, infrastructure costs, right? but not significantly. But sure. we have to spend more money on that. Um, uh, yep, instead, uh, going looking at the development activities, um, you recently revealed an updated study design for your kidney disease uh, study. What are the main changes in that study? Well, basically, we are now in a position where we have had uh, extended uh, tox uh, studies uh, completed. Uh, and on top of that, we have also uh, developed a tablet. Mm -hmm. So that means we are not using a formulation any longer. We are now moved over to use a, a tablet. Mm -hmm. uh, and those two uh, elements have uh, allowed us to redesign the study, to optimize the study, uh, and also uh, enable us uh, to do uh, faster recruitment. Uh, and that is important in, 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 uh, in all studies, of course, but it's also important for uh, our business development opportunities. So all up, uh, we have optimized a lot on the, on the study design 
and uh, also uh, seen in relation to uh, to our opportunities for doing business development on, on, on that program as well. Sure. And uh, finally, what will be your main focus during the second half of 2022? Well, uh, what we are doing right now is that uh, we are finalizing uh, and getting the, the studies up and running. Mm -hmm. uh, the first study uh, that we will uh, do recruitment on is uh, the EXPAND study. Mm -hmm. We expect that uh, we will recruit the first patients here in uh, Q3 uh, this year. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, the, the other studies, uh, which is a result study. Uh, we expect that uh, we will do recruitment uh, in uh, Q4. Uh, of the first patients. So there will be a lot of focus on driving uh, those two pro programs forward. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, of course, driving uh, the nephrotic syndrome uh, project is important to us. Uh, and then uh, we're doing work uh, on the hyperinflammation uh, program, uh, which uh, we are still uh, considering uh, for uh, different kind of indications in, in, the, in that area. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in parallel with all this, uh, we are spending a fair bit of time uh, on our business development activities and uh, we have good progress on, on that side as well. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, a lot of exciting times to come then for, for the company for sure. Uh, thank you so much both of you for, for joining us today and uh, we wish you all the best for your upcoming work. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much.